I'm smoking every single day. The dude I was dating was a drug dealer. So even though we broke up, I still like mad weed. Like I'm smoking every day. I'm drinking like I'm not thinking nothing about God. I'm not praying, looking at like nothing about God. So I'm like, as I'm having this thought, like I'm knowing it's not my thought and I'm not high at this time necessarily, but um, I'm knowing it's not my thought. And it's like, he's saying like, you're doing the same thing. And I'm like, how? Like, it's like, I just start like having a conversation back and I'm like, how? And then he's like, anytime you use the gifts that I gave you, right, to promote the things of this world. And when I say the things of this world, I mean, the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. Mm. So you're using your gifts that I gave you to promote promiscuity, to promote addiction, to promote the the kingdom of darkness. Who do you think you're glorifying? Like, what kingdom do you think you're working for? Mm. And it, like, really, it, like, kind of hit, like, it really hit me. Like, it just, like, in that moment, it just, like, completely, like, wrecked me because... And also more revelation started coming to my head. And again, I'm knowing this is not me because I don't even think like this. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos. And it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram, posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is, your boy, Mr. J-Hill. J-Hill Podcast. Another special guest in the building. You see me with the same clothes on because I'm working. Different week, but we working. Yo, uh, this guest bringing up, I don't have too much information about this young lady because she don't do interviews, but that's what <laughs> this is for. But what I will say is she probably can rap a lot, lot better than a lot of you people out there. You know what I'm saying? I got to watch how I speak when I'm speaking in the presence of, I don't know, it just gets worse and worse. I don't know. I don't say in the presence of God, but I should be in the presence of God all the time. But I'm human, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Child like CC is in the building. What up? What's up, bro? First of all, you are talented as 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 heck. Appreciate that. I, I can like, should I like be me? Like I'm trying to like. Be you can be cautious. you. I'll I be trying. I encourage people not to curse though. I'll be like, if you can restrain, that would be appreciated. Okay. But yeah. I'm trying to respect you. I appreciate and then also, that. Also, I do know that like you. You re I don't want to say new, but you a few years removed. You ain't you ain't been yeah. doing it for too many years, so Not I, I got to be careful. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you, like, it might be easy for you to, like, uh, step back. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to, I don't, don't want to be promoting that. Okay, I don't know what you mean, but I feel you. You know, like, what is it called? Like, when you go, when you sober and you have a drink again? Oh, no, what sir. Relax. Nah, like, nah, 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 fresh, nah, like, nah. you like, you for like three, four years now, right? I, like four or five, like 2019, but nah, I'm, I ain't, nah, 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 nah. nah. Oh, we that's why I said I gotta be careful, because I don't want you to relapse over No, here. no, we ain't relapsing. We good. <laughs> <laughs> we good. How you don't, first of all, I feel like for the interviews that I did watch, the one, or maybe two. Yeah. You got such a great energy and a great spirit. Appreciate that. But you say you don't like doing interviews. I, I don't like doing interviews like that, but I'm going to tell you why. It's why? really my fault. Because the interviews I've done, people ask me, like, the same stuff because they don't really know nothing. So I think it's more uh, of, like, my fault. Like, they ain't really. So they be like, oh, when you start doing Christian rap, like, it'd be, like, the same little questions. And I'd be like, uh Yeah. It's, like, a little draining. So that's what it'd be. Okay. So. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, it's I get that. Fault. If they trying to get that, I get that. Yeah. I do want to start from the beginning, though. Yeah. Right? I told you we want to go through the journey. Okay. I know. I do know that um, there was a time where you was struggling with smoking. Yeah. And, um... The way you stopped was like really unconventional. Yeah. Right. Like it was like a come to life moment. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I wanna um I wanna go back even before Christian rap. Okay. Like, when did you get introduced to like music in general and you knew that this was a thing that you wanted to pursue at all? 
Yeah, Period. I'm going to answer that. But I want to first give you some flowers a little bit. I was watching some interviews before I came on here. You know, I got to research. I'm like, bro is a good interviewer. Oh, thank you so much. Like, you're listening. You're taking, like, you're actually listening, pulling questions from, like, the conversation. I was like... I need to I need to let him interview me because oh, thank you. I knew like right away I was like he gonna he gonna pull out the question so I appreciate that for real you're a great interviewer <laughs> but um ask your question again because yeah like just know. go let's go back to oh, inception is that the right word inception, like yeah. when when did you know you wanted to make music be creative yeah do things unconventional like when did you know that before we even get to Christian rap yeah, you good. before we even get there yeah so I always knew I feel like if I'm not mistaken like I started with like just creative things in general so like writing poems writing short stories like rap i used to watch like a lot of battle rap and stuff mm. um i want to say like not to like date myself but like like even remember like 106 in park like freestyle fridays when i was younger stuff like that um but just different things of that nature and then it got to the point where i would watch that stuff then I'd be like, hey, let's battle rap. Like, talk to my cousins or my siblings or something. And they was like, nah, Cece, you're actually good. Like, that slide. And then from there, I just kind of kept, like, kept doing it type thing. So. Where you from originally? New York. It doesn't sound, it sound like somewhere down south. Because my life is interesting. So, like, I, I was born in New York. But when I was, like, four, I moved to Virginia. Then from Virginia to North Carolina. What part of Virginia? Fredericksburg. Stafford area. Okay, that's timing. deep down south. I don't know. Yeah, because, I mean, it ain't Alexandria, so. Nah. That's <laughs> all so I'm assuming it's down south. Yeah. Well, well, how old were you when you moved to North Carolina? I don't even know. Like, 13-something, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so there's some southern in there. Yeah. Okay, so you always, so you listen to battle rap. Yeah. And you knew, like, you, you got confirmation from your friends, from your peers, that you was good doing Not it. even my friends, because I was, like, really weird about even sharing that I could rap with people outside my family. Cause I dealt with like a lot of like anxiety, shyness and stuff. And you know, the first thing people say when you be like, I can rap, let me hear some. Yep. And it's like, nah. So, but yeah, like my siblings, family, stuff like that. People I was comfortable with was telling me like, nah, that's actually good. But even if they didn't, I feel like I would have still just been doing it. Cause I actually, for, like, I really just felt drawn to it. Mm. Like to keep making music type thing. Do you still like, think you suffer from like anxiety and things like that? Do you get nervous on a big light on? Nah, like when I say I used to suffer from anxiety, I mean, I would be up here like, like, not being able to, like, I dealt with it bad. Like, I couldn't even speak. I'd be sweating, like, weird stuff type thing. So, nah. Like, I, I think normal nerves sometimes, but not, like, nothing like I used to be at all. Mm. So, you're not yeah. nervous right now? Nah. I was making sure. Was nah, I'm not nervous. I feel like you're trying to intimidate me, though. No, I no, like no. That, I don't want to intimidate you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure you're good. Like, I might have to give you some water. I might have to go to the store and get you some uh, Fiji or something. Nah, I'm good, though. You like Fiji, right? Uh, no? No, I don't like Fiji, bro. I only like... I like spring water from like Whole Foods store. He has some Deer Park, y'all. This is and crazy. <laughs> Deer Park is not the one. Like, no offense to Deer Park. I hope you're not sponsored because I'm about to mess it up. But Deer Park is not the one at all. So we had a little conversation, but that's it. What's what's, what's the water you like? Because you said you keep saying spring water from the grocery store or something. Like Whole Food. I don't know what y'all got in Atlanta and stuff, but we got like Harris Teeters, yeah. like Whole Food stores. But what water is in Harris Teeters that you like? It's like their brand. Like I be liking the brand water from the Whole Food stores. I don't know why they taste better, but they do. And water got a taste too. I was trying to tell him that. Like if you really drink water, you know it got a taste for real. Like different water tastes different type That's thing. true, but bro, you just said you like Harris Teeter water over... Uh, <laughs> I don't like a, like, I don't know, essential water or something like that. Yeah, nah, I don't like essential water. None of that. You just picky. I ain't picky, man. I just know what I like. You just like what you like. Yeah. Type timing. All right, whatever. So let's go back to, to you making this, this hip-hop music, battle music, right? Yeah. So at what point of time did you, like, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to take it serious. Um, That wasn't low-key until, like, High school. I got like an interesting story, but I don't know how in depth I should go. Bro, we, we got here. time. We here. I'm going depth. So my brother, my oldest brother, I don't know why he started hanging out with these people, but he started hanging out like literally in like a trap house type thing. And it was two guys there who was rapping and they were like trying to start like a group. So he was like, yo, my sister can rap. Like she can help y'all. Like she can rap. So he literally took me over there. And that was like the first time I ever for whatever reason, like, I felt comfortable, like, rapping around them. Like I said, prior to this, only, like, family, like, really close people to me. 
but for whatever reason, like first time I go over there, they like turn on a beat, like we're freestyling, like that type timing. And again, that, this was the first time like other people is also speaking into it, like you better than me type thing. Like, so that was like the first time I really was like, yo, I should actually take this seriously. Like I'm rapping at a caliber, like me rapping against like other people who consider themselves somewhat professional, not really professional. It was like a trap house with a laptop and a mic. And we thought we was doing something, but they was taking it serious. And I was like keeping up with them type timing. Okay. So that's when I was like, okay, I can actually do that. So from there, I was like over there, like every single day, like rapping, recording. Um, So that's when I like started taking it serious somewhat. But even at that point, I wasn't right taking it like trying to be online or stuff, nothing like that, to like 2019. So, at what point did you see had to have some success with it? Was that 2019? What happened? What was it? I so pretty much I had like a situation, like a bad breakup basically, and it kind of caused me to like really just need something to like focus on. If that makes sense. So I was like, I'm really trying about to try to get locked in with this music. But the problem was I had no money. So I was like, I'm going to just turn on a beat, record myself on the phone. At that time, those videos was kind of popular anyway. People just freestyling stuff like that. Um, so I just recorded myself, would just be rapping. And those videos, like, started to, I'm not going to say take off, like, to the caliber, like, my videos be taking off now. But for me to just come online, zero followers, to have two, 300 people commenting, like, saying this is fire, stuff like that, it was, like, one of those things where, the videos were getting a lot of views, a lot of engagement and stuff online. So it would be me transitioning to a testimony because I probably only did this for like, it wasn't even that long. Like I would say less than six months I was really pursuing this and different people started reaching out. Like people like, oh, I'll shoot for you for free. Let me manage you. Like all this different stuff just started happening like within that short amount of time of me just posting. I wasn't even at the studio. I was just really dedicated to, I'm going to try to drop a freestyle video or something like every few days, like be consistent type thing. <clears throat> so when you first started, it wasn't gospel rap. Do nah. You, first of all, do you categorize yourself as? I do. Yes. Okay. I don't mind. Like I consider myself a Christian rapper. Okay. So at that moment, it wasn't Christian rap. No. So then now the question that everybody asks, at what point does it go from I'm online rapping, mm-hmm. right? I'm getting some success, 200 comments. That's a lot. That's still a lot right now. Right now, yes, it, literally. So, so I have zero files. I'm getting 200 comments. That's a lot. When yeah. does it go from that to now testimonial and I'm, I'm, I'm changing it up? All right, so let's get to the testimony. All right, so basically, like I said, this is like 2019 moving towards like the end of 2019. I have this moment, so... At this point, like I said, stuff was going so well online. Like, people were really trying to, like, work with me, different management teams, independent labels, stuff like that. So I'm literally set to go meet with some people. Like, a serious meeting. I'm telling all my family, like, everyone's excited type thing. And I would say maybe, like, a week or so before I'm set to, like, take this meeting with them. Well, who? It was, like, a management team. Like, I don't even remember. Independent, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> like, who they were, but it was enough to where I got it. Like, looking on their page, I just remember being excited, like, oh, snap, they done X, Y, and Z. But, um, like, I would say, like, a week before I was set to, like, take that meeting, I had got a DM, and it's going to sound crazy, but this is what really happened. And the I Bible remember, talk I remember about hearing this. this. I, you probably I, yeah, heard, yeah, yeah, heard some of this. Yeah, so, yeah. like, God will take the – he uses the foolish things to confound the wise, right? So I got a DM, and it was from this page, and they were like – um, we're the Illuminati and we want to recruit you, this, whatever, whatever. And I'm, like, looking at the DM and I, like, literally laughed at it. I don't think the Illuminati is out here DMing people to recruit them or whatever. But um, I looked at the DM and I laughed it off or whatever. Um, but it's like I had a thought after, like, reading the DM and I just started thinking about the fact that people really do that. So I was, like, saying, like, to myself and kind of out loud because I was just in the room by myself. I was like, man, I would never sell my soul. Like, what I look like selling my soul for anything type thing. Um, And it's like I had an epiphany. And I don't know about you. Like, you ever feel like you – have you felt like you ever heard God before? Like, you ever felt like God talked to you? conviction? Maybe. I ain't going to lie. I'm challenged with that. You're challenged? Yeah. Like, like, because I – I'm still trying to hear his voice and know when is his voice it's, and when is mine. 
all right, that's a good that's a good thing you bring up. So that was that moment. So it's like I'm having this thought. It feels somewhat audible, but it's not maybe as audible as like me and you talking necessarily, but it's like audible. And it's like a thought outside of my own thought, if that makes sense. Mm. So at this time, I'm I'm smoking every single day. The dude I was dating was a drug dealer. So even though we broke up, I still like mad weed. Like I'm smoking every day. I'm d- drinking like I'm not thinking nothing about God. I'm not praying, looking at like nothing about God. So I'm like, as I'm having this thought, like I'm knowing it's not my thought and I'm not high at this time necessarily, but um, I'm knowing it's not my thought. And it's like, he's saying like, you're doing the same thing. And I'm like, how? Like, it's like, I just start like having a conversation back and I'm like, how? And then he's like, anytime you use the gifts that I gave you, right, to promote the things of this world. And when I say the things of this world, I mean, the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. Mm. So you're using your gifts that I gave you to promote promiscuity, to promote addiction, to promote the the kingdom of darkness. Who do you think you're glorifying? Like, what kingdom do you think you're working for? Mm. And it, like, really, it, like, kind of hit, like, it really hit me. Like, it just, like, in that moment, it just, like, completely, like, wrecked me because... And also more revelations started coming to my head. And again, I'm knowing this is not me because I don't even think like this. But like more revelations start coming. Like people think that selling your soul is we hear people, oh, you do blood sacrifices. They killed a family member to get on. Or they doing a seance to the devil or something like that, which I'm sure those things really happen. Matter of fact, I know those things really happen. But it's like he revealed to me in that moment. It's, it's really more simple than that. Like, mm. it's a lot more simple than what people think it is. And I think some people only consider things demonic and stuff when it's very overtly mm. demonic. But it's like, <clears throat> it's a lot more simple than that. And he kind of just revealed that to me in that moment. And I just remember, like, I just sat there and I got on YouTube. Like, I was just kind of stuck. I got on YouTube. And then when I get on YouTube, like, a video come up. Now, mind you again, now the algorithm is a thing. Like, you watch certain content, certain stuff going to pop up. I was not watching Christian content. I wasn't doing anything. A video pops up, and it just starts also speaking to me. It wasn't speaking about that, but it was just speaking to, like, the personal things I was going through. And at that point, I'm just crying, like, because I'm Mm. like, God is literally, this is God. And it's like it was almost like an undeniable feeling like, God is communicating with me and trying to reach me in this moment. And it's like, I couldn't help, but I don't know. Yeah. Like I couldn't help but submit. But even with that, like that next day, I still remember I woke up that next day and like was doing my same routine. Also with that story, like, like I said, I smoked a lot. So that night I normally would have smoked before I went to bed. Cause it's like, I had to smoke to go to sleep. I had to smoke to eat. I smoked when I woke up. Like it was like, it was like my life. I just went to sleep that night for like the first time in like the longest. I didn't even feel the need to smoke. Like I just went to sleep because I was just like so overwhelmed. But when I woke up that next day, I was like, I'm about to just get back to business as usual. So I roll up and stuff. Me and my brother was living together at the time. Um, And I remember like we were smoking in the kitchen. And even while I was sitting there smoking, I was like, bro, I think God is telling me to stop smoking and to stop, like, rapping. Mm. And we both high at this point. Now I am high and he's high. Yeah, so, so he's looking at me. At like, yeah, he's like, do it. Like, just high, like, whatever. <laughs> so he's like, dude, he's like, I was like, I am. So that day, like, that was like five years ago, last time I ever smoked. And beyond the fact that he, like, took me out of that in that moment, I was still living in the house. My brother and I was living together. He didn't stop smoking. We had another roommate. They were still smoking. Everybody smoking every day still around me. I still had, like, no desire anymore whatsoever to smoke or anything. The music piece was a little bit harder because, like, I had told him that in the kitchen, but it probably took me, like, a few days. I'm like, bro, I got all these views. I got all these comments. I went from, like, zero to almost, like, 10,000 followers in a few months, like, but I was like, I'm going to just delete it. Mm. I took down the videos. I deactivated all my stuff or deleted it, depending on the different platforms. Um, and I was just like, all right, God, I'm going to just, whatever, I guess. I'm mm. going to just stop doing music. 
So it was literally from 2019 to 2022 to where I basically stopped doing music. I didn't plan like, oh, I'm about to just do Christian rap because I didn't even know Christian rap was like a ding ding. Yeah. It was just a time of me being obedient to God and me feeling like he said, stop doing the music, stop the other stuff you're doing. So I just stopped. And in 2022, I just felt like he was calling me back to it. So mm, that's it. First of all, it's so I wanted to touch on some things. OK, so no cap. Yeah, let me show you this, bro. I can't okay. make this up. I just got this the other day, and I laughed too. I thought it was weird. Bro, look at this. I can't make this up. <laughs> he got a message from the Illuminati. Ain't that crazy? I swear, I'm like, bro. Maybe this might face. be your moment, bro. I'm, I don't know. So, <laughs> I don't know. I'm telling you some stuff. But yeah, so I got that the other day. But um, wow, that's that's a lot. So did you? So when you stop smoking, you you go off the grid. Did you find a church? Like, how, like, how was the rest of your life? Because it's other things outside of smoking, other things outside. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. So basically, like, I stopped smoking, and God is like, if y'all, don't, man, and this is why, like, Christianity, like, faith to me is not like my grandma religion. Like, someone told me I had to be a like. It's like real to me because the way He saved me was like so radical and just like, what the heck? But like. That around that same time, like I told you, like I was smoking a lot. Every job and stuff I had, I used to either have to like try to like stop smoking for a few days, drink a bunch Mm -hmm. of water so I can pass piss tests and stuff or take somebody pee. Like I was on that. Like that's what I would do. I had got a job like a few, probably like a month or two later, end up being the best job of my life like I'm blessed now to do music full time but prior to that I, I still was working that job like end up being the best job of my life the first job I that this was the first job I ever had that they didn't even require a piss test so I could have kept smoking like at this job and been at this job but it was like a sales job and stuff that pretty much changed my life during that time so I was actually working because prior to that like I said the dude I was dealing with helping him I was helping him and stuff like that but um so I started working um, and I did start going to church for the first few months. I wasn't going to church. Um, maybe like the first month or two, I was just like consuming content and stuff like Christian content. But when I did start going to church, like I was like, literally like obsessed, like mm. prior to that too, I would go to church here and there, but you know, how like sometimes you in church and you just kind of there cause someone mm-hmm. told you to come or you like not even really catching what the pastor is saying. Like you just kind of just there. But it's like for the first time I was actually intrigued. Like it's like, you know how people like keep preaching. Mm -hmm. You like that's how I felt. Like keep going. Like I want to hear more. Mm -hmm. Like it's like my I felt the need to just want to consume more. So I was going to Sunday service. If they had a Wednesday night, if they had a Monday, any special services, like I was just in there trying to like get as much in me as possible. Same with reading. Like I became obsessed with reading the Bible, like it was like literally just radical. It was like God increased my desire to get to know him in different ways. Mm. So So I was just talking about like how it's like different levels of like being saved. Like you get when you first get there, like you super excited. Yeah, that's a real thing. I was wondering, did you how how was the next level? Did did you experience a fall off? Or yes. So was- I definitely had like so it was like really radical. Like, at first, like, I'm literally going to everybody. Like, my my siblings, my friends, like, I'm trying to get everybody. So I'm like, God, is real. This happened. Like, I'm, like, just p- preaching, like, Holy Spirit feel like preaching. And then I will say, like, maybe probably, like, a year into it, I felt myself starting to backslide. But it wasn't, like, backsliding back into, like, I never went back to, like, smoking and stuff like that. Like, different stuff I was doing. It was more of, like, a like a mindset questioning God maybe yeah like not even questioning God but it's like I didn't feel as on fire anymore Mm. if that makes sense like yeah at one point like I at first it's like like, I felt like yeah it was like it kind of felt like uh yeah this God stuff is cool but you know maybe I don't gotta go to most like maybe I don't gotta read every day maybe I don't gotta pray every day maybe I don't gotta tell everybody about God it was more of like one of those things like I started to feel like Maybe I'm doing too much, kind of. But I will say in that process, you you do begin to realize, like, you're really not doing too much. Mm. Like, if I really feel like God saved me, 
And I'm saying not only did he save my life, I feel like he saved my life, changed my life, then just like gave me a new life. Why wouldn't you want to tell everybody about that? Like if if you believe that the word of God is how you get to know him, if you believe that prayer is how you um, get closer to him, how could you do that too much or be in your word too much? Mm. So it was more of that thing where it's like I felt like I didn't want to do the things that I used to like as easily, but the more I t- like, I feel like it's normal. Like you don't always you, feel. How did you get through that though? How did you muster through that 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 moment, feeling like you backsliding a little bit, falling back a little bit? Just realizing that it's not always about a feeling. It's about like a a, a commitment. It's just like mm. when people talk about in relationships. Like if you like, you may not always wake up and feel like you're in love with somebody, but that don't mean you treat them differently or mm. you move differently because you don't feel it necessarily. You like you still make a decision to get up every day. Like I personally feel like God chose me in a sense. Mm. And the Bible actually talks about it. It talks about how we're drawn. Like no one comes to God unless they're drawn to him um, by the spirit. So I feel like he chose me. So it's like I, I he saved me. He helped me. He got me to this point. Why can't I wake up every day and say, I'm going to choose you? Mm. Like, you don't have to, like, at this point, you've given me enough to say, I have enough power in me to say, I can wake up every day and choose you, mm. if that makes sense. No, nah, it's crazy because, like, I um I do understand. Yeah. And, like, I, one of my friends just started, like, she changed her whole way of rap as well. Her name mm-hmm. is, like, Martina Marie. She's from, awesome. um, from Texas, I think, mm-hmm. Houston. And, like, and I see the conviction, and I think the first thing I thought was, like, man, I just pray that she can stay mm-hmm. motivated because I know how easily you can get yeah, swayed. you really can. Like, you really got to be careful. Like, even when I started to, like, go on socials, like, doing Christian rap, it was definitely a temptation. Like, mm. people, like, you know, you ain't got to do that. Like, you can, like, it's definitely temptation. But I think, I don't know, I feel like once your heart is positioned a certain way, it just be like, you can't pay me. Like, it's nothing you can do to get me to turn my back on God. Mm. Like, he bought me too far. What's some, like, so what is some advice that you would give to somebody that might have just made this transition from, like, secular rap or secular music to now Christian based rap? How do you, and is it technically, if it's rap, what what's secular mean? What does that even mean? So I literally, I'm glad you asked. So I think it's levels to it in a sense. Happy Birthday is technically a secular song. Like, oh. A secular song is basically considered anything that has to do with, like... The world? Yeah, in a sense, like, not necessarily related to God or giving glory to God, if that makes sense. Okay. So I feel like not all secular... A secular song necessarily doesn't have to be inherently bad or evil because it can still have some principles that's not necessarily saying, hey, I'm giving glory to God, but it still has those good principles, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, okay. most of the time when you hear people talk about secular music, though, we're probably talking about like club music and not even club music. <laughs> I'm just talking about anything <laughs> that's <laughs> like that music. what I said earlier, basically, like to me is like the music is like promoting darkness. Or oh, so not like Turkey music, not like Sexy Red. You talking about that like- is, I think Sexy Red's promoting darkness. I think she's promoting promiscuity. Oh, OK, OK. I'm thinking like. Lil Uzi or what? What's that? I know Uzi, but I don't listen nah, to music. No, I'm just thinking like when you say because I feel like they be talking about like demons and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, and now I think that's where people uh, probably get because even when I talk about it, I do get backlash sometimes when I talk about it. But in a sense, I don't. I'm the type of person like I'd be like some of the stuff I say. I don't necessarily expect everyone to understand or agree with me. But I'm not really saying it to get anyone to agree with me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it because I believe it. And I feel like if I can just plant a seed, like get you to think about something maybe you never thought about, or if I can water a seed, like get you to further think about something that maybe God already was putting in your heart, I'm fine with that. Like, I don't feel like I have to convert anybody on the spot or get somebody to agree with me. So even like when it comes to the music, it'd be like, I personally feel like if like, I don't personally rock with music that, promotes darkness and sin because I know the I know the effect it had on my life personally and mm. the effect it's had on some loved one's life that I love just seeing how music has an, an, like affected them and I think some people maybe because they don't 
they haven't had a personal experience with it, they may not see like the impact mm. that secular music has on people's lives, like for real, for real, and how the enemy literally uses that as like the soundtrack to some people's lives being ended or people making very poor decisions that change their lives. I think sometimes it's hard for them to like really understand, but like for me, it's serious. No, for, we just seen it was a movie that came out on um, on Netflix with Jamie Fox. I don't know the name of the movie where like they it was a scene where mm -hmm. they was in a club and like they was listening to music mm -hmm. and they was all zombies. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the movie? Anybody remember? Who played Ty who? Who cloned Tyrone? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember. And so like when you say that, it's funny that they made that comparison, that correlation because music can have you under the spell. But I was going to ask you about, back to my friend. Okay, to somebody that that just made a transition. Okay. From like secular music to gospel music, right? Or gospel rap. What's some advice would you give them from your experience in, in your five years into this? I've already been doing this for two years, though. Well, two the years. rap part. Um, well, rap. Like, I would just say, like, advice. I would just say to stay the course. Because especially if you start to make an impact, of course, different opportunities and stuff are going to come that may try to persuade you to like, hey, you know, maybe you ain't got to rap Christian. You can just rap clean. Mm. And then from like, oh, maybe you ain't got to rap clean. You can you can say a little like, I don't know. I feel like if it's in your heart, though, you just got to like stay strong on your convictions, man. I don't know what else to say. Mm. Like, really, that's like me. At least, how I think. I ask that because, like, even, like, it's funny because I talk a lot about how everybody always talk about how God gives blessings and things like that. But I feel like we overlook so many of the blessings that the Satan, give, Satan gives yeah. us. Like, Satan gives us blessings to mask the, in ways that it look good. Yeah. So it, so it doesn't, so it doesn't look wrong. Like you said, it might not be as big and blatant, right? Yeah. But Satan will give you a blessing in the form of some money, so you think it's God. It's a thing, too. I call it the counterfeit blessing. Mm. Like, that's what I feel like I was, like, working my way into. Like, I was going to mess around and accept a counterfeit blessing because I'm getting attention and stuff. And then I start this, and God just go, like, I like to say I feel like um, it's that's even in the Bible. Like, when Jesus, it's a, it's a scripture in Matthews where Jesus is being tempted um, well, it's in different Gospels, but he's being tempted by uh, Satan, Satan, and he's mm -hmm. offering him yep. he's like, I give different you all things. This. I, I give you all this. And it's like, he's like mm -mm. that's one of the things I hate is that some people really feel like. He's like, bro, I think it was like, you ain't eat. Like, you can have all this. Why are you doing this? You can. It, nah, it, it was, he was offering him. He, like, put him on a ledge and offered yeah, him, like, everything whole, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was there. But I think, uh. Yeah, it's just it's just a counterfeit, and I feel like I forgot what I was gonna say. I ain't gonna lie, mm. but yeah. No, I think wasn't that like after his forty days or something like right? He like, was fasting. Yeah, he was fasting. He was like, bro, you don't gotta do and this. And that was have, right. The, and like, this why I said a counterfeit before the real thing, because it was right before he was about to exactly. actually step into his ministry. Yep. Like his real ministry is when he tried to offer him the like, world. He's like, you can yeah, have all like this. you can have it. But yeah. I think for some people too, it's just one of those things of. I don't think some people even, like, you spoke of, like, Lil Uzi Vert. Like, I'm not really from, even when I was, like, in the world and stuff, I wasn't really a fan of his necessarily. But I, I've seen stuff, like, people say he's overtly, I guess, demonic and stuff in his music. I don't think people worship Satan and really believe that Satan is, like, going to put them in hell and, like, they're going to be, like, I don't think they view Satan as a enemy or a monster, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Because the Bible talk about that, too, how he uh, acts like an angel of light, basically. So I don't think, like, someone's like, oh, I'm going to make this type of music and then something going to happen to me. It's like, I think they believe whatever he's telling them, if that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I didn't mean to get into this, but... You good. I feel like even if you do it unconsciously, mm -hmm. you still going to be judged by... By your sin. It's, mm -hmm. It is what it is. So, and I think, and this is where it gets tricky. Where I was about to have a conversation with Lecrae. It, it gets tricky because. It's like I want once, you to say what you want to say. Because yeah. you want to say something, but you don't want to say it. Nah, because it's like. It's so many different things out there. And that's why I say I get so. 
I don't want to say confused, but it get frustrating for me or, or, or discouraging for me because there's so many different views out there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, some people, let's say talk, we talk about um, pagan holidays. Okay. It, it could be whatever, right? Some yeah. people look at the cross being a, um, a, a, a symbol, like, yeah. like worship and a symbol. Like some people look at it like that, right? Yeah. And I think what happened is the devil presents opportunities and make it okay. So you're not... It's not necessarily like I'm worshiping the devil, mm -hmm. but you're, but unconsciously, because you are worshiping the devil, you still get judged the same way. It doesn't matter if you if you're doing it consciously or not. You still get judged the same way. You get what I'm trying to say? Like if you go and you and you celebrate another god, whether you know it's another god or not. But what happened is the devil makes it makes it the norm, mm -hmm. right? Like I try not to like because this conversation go deep. But like like let's say. I don't know. Do you, you, you celebrate Christmas and like? Nah, not necessarily for the reasons people don't. My mama just always got us gifts at tax time. After you know how that is. But that's what. <laughs> but that's where I'm going yeah. with it though. Like so. Like that's kind of where I'm going with it. Like so, you might not celebrate Christmas because you know it, it's, it's, it's pagan holiday, right? But you. But we make. And you might guess I'm trying to not make you uncomfortable. Like we make no, excuses. You good. You good. We make you good. excuses for think for worldly things to fit in our in our in our box, not mm -hmm. understanding that we're still gonna get judged the same. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah, you might not, you might not be, you might not be um, worshiping the devil per se, mm -hmm. but because you're not worshiping God and His words and what's in the Bible, you're still going to get judged like you somebody that's worshiping the devil. I mean, not technically, and I think that's the difference from like uh, maybe like a legalistic perspective mm. of what, what that the mean? faith is. So, legalistic says like, I gotta do all of these things, like I gotta do all these different things in order to not get judged by God. Mm. But the Bible don't say that. Like, the Bible talks about the only way anyone can make it to heaven. The Bible actually says, and I try to be careful when talk about this, because I'm not Me like, it's not <laughs> like, it's not giving people a license to sin or do evil. But uh, God says, like, our works, like our good works and stuff is like filthy rags to him. So the Bible also says that we are saved by grace through faith alone so that no man can boast. Mm. So it's basically saying you can't do enough good or do enough things right to get to heaven. Your only interest to heaven is by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Mm. That's what the Bible says. That's a part of the gospel of Jesus Christ is you believe in me. And because you believe in me, that is your entrance into heaven. All that extra stuff is a byproduct of your faith being in him. It's like, because you believe in me, I can enable you to do the right things and to actually be able to discern right from wrong, so on and so forth. But it's not like, it's not, a, oh, you getting judged either way because someone, if we're talking about a Uzi, uh, Uzi or someone, you not, he's not getting judged necessarily because of the things he's rapping and stuff. Not to say it's wise, not to say it's good, not to say it's not evil, but the judgment is coming because he doesn't have faith in the only one that can save him. Mm. That's like the real faith. Like people try to add to it, but that's really what it is. Mm. So, mm. no, nah, this is get deep, bro. Like that's why I like I, I love having these conversations because it's just it's it's always that that nuance of like just different perspectives, and and that's why I think I was talking earlier about how it can get discouraging for me because I just want what's right. I, it's like I want the answers. Like I want you know a good you know a good thing I heard before. What someone told me. Instead of always thinking about, like, what's sin and what's not sin, like, just think about, does this glorify God or not? Mm. Like, that's a deeper, that's an easier gauge. Because people, we can get real technical. Like, I can say, hey, yeah, I, I'm sure you had that conversation. Mm. Drink is not a sin. Jesus turned water into wine. Mm. Whatever. We can have those conversations. But it's like, if I'm sitting here drunk, is this glorifying God or not? Mm. Like, that's an easy gauge to just ask yourself that in what way or shape or form if something I'm doing is it bringing glory to God. Mm. So I feel like that's an easier gauge for me. Do you have a hard time of, like, trying to balance being of the world and of God now? Like, because you, like, you're rapping about God yeah. and things like that, but you still have to live a certain lifestyle kind of as being in the industry. You still have to work with certain people. It's like, are you? Do you have a challenge balancing balancing that at all? Nah, I don't feel like I do. Like, um, I feel like I just be being me. Like any room I walk into, I still just be being me. I understand everyone's like, not, not to say I've even arrived. Like I don't feel like I've arrived. I feel like I still have a lot of growing and maturing to do. I still need a lot of discipleship, mentors, all that stuff. But 
I just don't expect nothing. I don't necessarily like expect perfection or anything from anybody because I know I ain't do it on myself. I didn't do it to myself. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to quit this. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to be a more Christ-like person. Like, it literally took, like, a work from God to do it. So it's just more of me just having grace for people. I do. I am one. Like, you asked me earlier, uh, you want me to cuss? I'm like, no, if you could restrain from cussing. I'm always going to encourage people to hold themselves to a higher standard, especially if you have some type of conviction about it, because for you to ask me means you probably considered Mm it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just... Nah, I just be me. I don't really. What about yeah. the the other Christians that may judge you? Do you feel that as well? People like talking about criticizing the way you make music, criticizing yeah. the way you're talking about uh, the yeah, Lord. Yeah, that happens a lot. Like surprisingly, what people don't realize, what church you ever been to a church where they was rapping on Sunday morning? Yeah, you have you been to church? I'm sure you've been to church. Yeah. Yeah. I probably, I mean, probably not rap, but I mean. Praise and worship was always a thing in a black church right. anyway. So it's a thing, but not rap. Like they like you'd be surprised most like churchy people, I guess, they don't really not it's it's weird how I'm even here. I don't know. Cause they don't even rock with rap like that. Like the audience sometimes you'll be surprised how little people who are actually like Christians that like it. Some people think the genre as a whole is demonic. Mm. Like they find rap music. Like, I don't care what you're talking about. That is demonic. You shouldn't be rapping at all. So, yeah, I definitely go through that. But Does that bother you at all? or like It did at first. Like, it really did at first. It bothered me a little bit at first. Um, like, they like they had me questioning myself for, like, 30 seconds. I actually got to rap about it. Like, mm. I bet, let me ask God. That's not what I heard. Mm. Because people was, like, really getting on me. And I'm like, God, like, you told me to do this. Why is they trying to tell me? Like, this is wrong. But that's why I be telling people, get in your Bible, because it makes it easier, like, to hear the, ver- uh, the the voice of God. But it's like, even in that, he was showing me the Pharisees and the Sadducees who used to get on him. Like, mm. here it is, the Son of Man himself, God in human form in front of you, and you trying to criticize him and telling him, oh, you, you, sh- you can't do You can't eat and not wash your hands. Like, what are you doing that's sinful? So he's like, they did it to him, for one. The religious people did it to him. But it's also a thing of people tend to, and that's why you're like you're talking about you're a little confused. People tend to take man-made traditions and customs and call them requirements from God, mm. if that makes sense. So their makeup, their take their tradition or what they deem customary to do in church or to do in these different platforms, and now they're saying God said it. And it's like God ain't said that, you said that. Mm-hmm. And that's what and that's basically what he revealed to me. Like you heard like we locked in. I don't, I'm reading the scripture. I don't see nowhere where it's saying don't rap over it. Like nothing even implying for your argument besides the fact that in your tradition or custom, it doesn't fit within your box of how you feel like music should be made unto God pretty much. Mm. So it took that took personal quiet time with the Lord to like quiet out the noise to say, I know what God told me to do. But it's funny because you said you've only been making music for like two years. So mm-hmm. when you say that, that took some time or that... that, that no, nah, when I say time, I mean like a few days. I ain't oh. let it... <laughs> I was, it well, wasn't it nobody cool. like... Yeah, it wasn't like I was... Yeah, it took like some time. So it ain't really like, bother you then? It did, but that's just me. I just get over stuff fast. Like I can be really... I could feel some type of way about something. Like really feel it, but I'm not finna like sit on it for like... I really be giving stuff to God for. I don't be having time. It's it slow you down too much. I don't be sitting on stuff for a long time. So how was this dealing with like? How was this in your personal relationships? What do you mean? Like, you dealing with other people, right? I mean, friendship. It could be romantic, whatever, mm-hmm. right? Because like you are, bro. Like you in this now. Like mm-hmm. like you said, man. You pull up. You don't curse. Like none of that. Like, mm-hmm. but everybody might not be on your level. Yeah. Especially your peers that you had before you walked into this. Yeah. Now, I ain't going to lie. Most of my friends that I had before was gone, like, after I stopped smoking. You know how some of those relationships can be, like, real surface? Mm-hmm. Like, and I encourage people to do that. Like, sometimes you'll find, like, the more you just mature, that a lot of your relationships was, like, just trauma bonding, mm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all really just hanging because... 
y'all both carrying some similar trauma type thing, which really keeps people from growing, whether they realize that or not. Like, you're creating relationships off of, oh, you got a boy problem, I got a boy problem, he ain't nothing, he ain't nothing. We bonding off of that. We bonding off the fact that we both like to get high. We're just bonding off of, like, trauma and I ain't going to... Never mind. Go but ahead. we just no, uh, take it there. No, no, no. Like it's like trauma bonding. So it's like once I did have a few friends who tried to like um like try to change a little bit, but it's like they was like, and I just can't. Like I'm not there yet. And uh, me too being still like a what I would consider like a baby believer, I ain't know how to help them. I was like, well, I'ma just keep praying and stuff. Like I don't really know how to help, but um, in my relationships now, I just feel like I have more just common-minded people, so it's not really hard necessarily. Mm. But I definitely had to leave a lot of people. I don't even want to say leave them behind because I didn't like purposely like I'm gonna cut you off. They kind of was just like, "Yes, yeah, sis, I'm gonna keep doing this. You can, you can do that now." But now they hit me up like a lot of people <laughs> be trying to like pop back up type thing. Like, oh, I see you. Like, of course they're gonna do that. Yeah, like girl. Yo, you know, it's funny. I'm thinking about it now. Like, you said you experienced, like, Christians, like, trying to condemn you and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it kind of bothers you for a quick second. Yeah. I'm curious to know, do you, are you ready for the next level of it? Like, because, like, you like you got mad followers. You got, like, 400-something, maybe 500,000 followers, mm-hmm. right? So, you, so you're really popular right now, right? Mm-hmm. But even that is not even to be compared to, like, what's coming. I'll be like this. This is how I'll be. i just be like... I just be trying to trust God's timing type thing. Because it be like, I don't even want nothing that I'm not even ready for, mm. if that makes sense. Like, I'm not one of those people that be trying to, like, I don't want nothing. I'm not where I, I, I like to say this. A good thing at a bad time is still a bad thing, Ooh. if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's still a bad. If you're not ready for it, that's not a blessing to you. It could have been a blessing, but it's not. Mm. So I just be like, if God put me there, I'm going to be ready because he's not going to put me there unless I'm ready. Mm. So that's how I feel. Yeah, what's your go-to verse that, like, you you always got to go to when you're going through something or you need some guidance? Like, what's your, your favorite verse? Um, My go-to verse? Um, and bring it Definitely down Romans 8.28. That's crazy. That was close. Mine is Romans 8.18. Really? Mm, it's powerful, man. Yeah. Why is it 8.28? Because it says that... Um, we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose or plan. So for me, when I just be going through it, I'd be like, you must be causing it to work together because I know I lo- you love me. I know I love you. And I know you called me according to a purpose. So it just be like, I know it's happening. And that really what be happening too. Mm. Like I realized that even when I get no's, rejections, like stuff like that, it's like, Every time I look back, it'd be like, he was either saving me for something or setting me up for something better. Mm. And it's like, the more you start to, I think, you know, I think a lot of people miss God and don't trust God. It's because they don't see him in stuff, Mm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So stuff happens sometimes, they think it's them or they think it was a coincidence, which I feel like calling things coincidences are literally robbing God of his glory sometimes because you thinking it's coincidence, you thinking it was you. But it's like the more you start to see God and stuff, the more you'll begin to trust him because you'll be like, yo, God, that was you. I think, I think. Um, and I ain't going to lie, even for myself, be yeah. straight up. I think a lot of people don't go as hard for God because they don't uh, understand, what's the word? They don't see the, um, I don't want to say benefit, yeah. but uh, it's like people take for granted their health until they're sick, mm. right? So yeah. the same with God is like, you don't take it serious because you don't you don't see the win in it or, or you don't see the importance of it. Yeah. Until you need to. Yeah. I say that cockiness or pridefulness, whatever you want to call it, comes from literally not need, thinking you need God. Like mm. that's and even me, if I'm being honest, like I didn't get as in depth into my testimony, but I was at a low point. Like I'm you see, I'm five, six and a half, almost five, seven. I'm like 120 pounds. I'm depressed. I'm going through a breakup. I was really at, he definitely caught me at a low point though. And I think that has to happen sometimes for some people. Cause like you said, without that humility, like Mm. you feeling like I need something, even though I didn't know that's what I needed. Cause I was going through this, but I wasn't like, Oh, I'm gonna turn to God. Now I'm thinking I just need to smoke more. I'm thinking I just need to get on. Like I just need to get famous or something. 
Like, I'm thinking the answer is something else. And it's like, he'll take those moments to be like, nah, you do need me. Mm. I got something else. I heard someone say, it's people right now who think whatever they have, you could say money or whatever, is like the answer to their problem. And two, they have problems those things can't solve pretty mm, much. Mm, mm. And that's when you realize, oh, I need God, matter of fact. Bro, it, I, just going back to the health uh, uh, example, right? Like, yeah. everybody want to be rich and stuff. But if you ask the richest man on this earth, right, if he's sick and on his deathbed and he got to die tomorrow, you ask him, what will he want? He would say he would give all his money away just to have another day on his earth. Can't pay for it. You can't pay for it, bro. And it's funny because like, like that goes into my favorite scripture, Romans eight eighteen. It basically says, "Well, it says, I consider that your present sufferings mm. will not even be, it can't even be compared to the glory that will be revealed in you." Yeah. And it's like that get me through every time. Like when I'm going through a hard time, it's like, bro, whatever you going through in this moment, you won't. It can't even be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed to you when you get out of this. You don't like, know you, you you preaching. Uh, I think too though. I think that scripture is more so also talking about like when it's all said and done as far as like us being able yeah, to be in the presence heaven. of God and mm -hmm. stuff. But I think that even preaches to the fact or talks to the fact. I may be being too preachy on this podcast, but we're going to find out. I mean, we here. It's all we good. here. But like the um, just speak to the fact that like a lot of this stuff not worth it. Like one thing we all know is we're going to get up out of here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's worth pursuing or at least trying to understand like, hey, is this God thing legit? Because if. If we wrong, we wrong. But if we right, you sick. Bro, no, bro, no, no. I say this, I swear on everything, bro. It's not if we wrong, we wrong. It's like, all right, this is exactly. And I'm saying, I, I don't, nothing in me think I'm wrong, but I'm just saying from a balanced perspective, if I'm Yo, playing the, it, it, the field evil, no, even that's what I'm rather. So, so for me, I yeah. look at it like, not if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, I look at it like this. Okay, cool. If I do everything by God's way, right? Yeah. If I'm wrong, nothing happens. Yeah. Like, nothing happens. Yeah. But, no, if I'm if I'm right, I go to heaven, right? Yeah. But if I'm wrong, like, if I'm wrong, nothing happens. But if I don't follow his path and I'm wrong, I go to hell. Yeah. So it's like I'd rather risk doing everything by his way mm -hmm. and being wrong and nothing happened than not risk not doing nothing by his way being wrong and going to hell yeah it's like it's a it's a win-win if that makes sense like that's yeah. how i look at it and i think too i i think it's even even from a now perspective because i think that's another reason some people don't take it seriously is because death seems so far away to everybody mm. but we all know it can be right around the corner you never know never know but even just in these like even in like your presence in the present time what i realized and this is why I'm like really, like, I have a huge conviction to just talk about stuff so openly is because everything, God telling me not to do stuff is not like just like some like, oh, I'm trying to control you, tell you what not to do. It's actually protecting me. Mm -hmm. Like that, I'm like, my life has gotten better, not just from like a, oh, give your life to God and everything's going to be okay. But it's like, just like, I don't worry about certain things no more. Like, Cause I know I'm doing more of the right things. I have less. I have a lot less to worry about. And because I know that I'm uh, following him in that way, even when bad stuff do happen, I'm like, I know this ain't karma. Mm. Like this is definitely God trying to work it for me. Cause I'm not out. It's not like when I was in the world, like I run up someone's house, try to drag them out the house, beat them up, kick their car, and then the next day I get in a car accident or something. It's like I probably ask for that. Mm. Versus like I know I'm like following his lead which because of that i'm protected in a way that goes beyond just like do what i say because i said to do it it's like no i'm actually telling you to do that because i'm trying to protect you not to keep you from stuff but let me ask you this though because that's yeah. why not i don't want to say confused but like yeah i get like it's challenging because you're still an artist yeah, yeah. right you still have goals you still yeah want i don't know if it's platinum you want to sell a certain amount you still it's still a a a worldly want kind of almost. Mm -hmm. You never like challenged with that? Like, because I mean, that's still of the world. Yeah, I would say um, it definitely has been times, even having to like re like, even having to like refocus myself to like not focusing on t being too focused on like the stuff you mm. mentioned. Like, oh, I got to get to the next, I got to post every day. I got to X, Y, and Z from that perspective. But it's like, I don't think it's bad to necessarily want to be great 
Mm. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing at all because the word actually talks about, like, when we shine our light, when things happen, it gives us a bigger opportunity to bring glory back to yep. God. Mm-hmm. So it's less about wanting to be great and more about me having to continue to check myself on why mm. is, is, a, is more of a thing. So I have to, like, continue to do heart checks to say, like, I don't be doing this because you're just trying to get likes and stuff like this. Like, you need to make sure your your heart is still always in the right place. But I'm always want to be, like, great. And I really think that's what discourages some people from not even wanting to do certain things because they think, like, that's a part of, like, my mission is to show people that you don't have to compromise and stuff to make it to a certain level. Mm. Like, I think a lot of people think they have to do that. And I feel like any place you got to compromise to get to, it wasn't really yours in the first place. So now you got to compromise to stay there. And then it's just swack at that point. So mm. I'm going to go as far as I'm supposed to go. No, nah, that's facts. Yo, yeah. two years in, man. You said you just loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it, you know. Yo, I ain't going to lie. I'm just blown away by your raps, though. Because, like, you really it. pretty, like, you good. Yeah. And, like, I don't want to say you don't see that often with, like, but not as often. Yeah. Like, I feel like you can still... I. F- like when you said that you like battle rap, mm-hmm. it wasn't surprising. Yeah. Because it's like I could, I get the energy of that. Yeah. With not the content of that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. It be like that. I really like rap though. Like I. Was I it? don't take like. I'm one of those people that feel like just because it's Christian rap, you can't just slide. You can't just use that as a pass. If that makes sense. Like I want people if they hear my music. I don't want them to just be like, oh, that was good because it was a Christian rap. Or that was good for for a Christian rap. I want them to say... That was good. That was just good. Like, even when people say... People probably should think I should take this as not a compliment. I just had a post, like, a week ago. It got, like, almost 5 million views. Half the comments is people saying, I ain't even religious, but this slide. Like, Mm -hmm. I want people to just like it because they like it. I don't know. I just be trying to do stuff in excellence from that way, but... I mean, I, that makes yeah, sense, I want them though. to like it. Just to, yeah, I, I don't feel like I get a pass because it's Christian. What made you? Because again, and I've seen people like not want to get in that box of like Christian rap, right? Yeah. What made you embrace it? I'm curious. Cause I, I just feel like someone. I don't know. I just feel like I don't mind. I want people to know, and I'm seeing it. Don't hurt. I think some people think it hurt, but I feel like it's just a statement to like who I am. Like if you talk to me, you're just gonna be like she a little Christian. Like she. It's nothing to hide to me. I just rather just be like, this is what you're listening to. Um, and I it maybe it do take away, like maybe some people don't listen. I don't know. But mm. I just felt like But I ain't gonna lie, I did think about I had a moment where I thought about like I'm like <sighs> I ain't even finna call myself a Christian rapper. But it wasn't for reasons that people probably expect. It was more of like a thing of it was really cause of the people like being weird. It would make me feel like it's like a balance of feeling like I don't want you to associate Christianity w- to me in a way like you probably have seen it, mm. if that makes sense. Because, like, for me, I grew up, like, I've seen, like, a lot of hypocrisy. Like, I've seen different things that would probably make me be like, I ain't finna be no Christian. They be... We all did. They be fake yeah. type thing. So that's, like, the only reason I thought about it first. I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm, like, one of them. Mm. But it's like... I know I'm not, so I'ma just, mm. yeah. Nah, this is good, man. Dang. So what are you? Do you have a project out right now that you pushing? So or we is it working coming? on one. I don't know when it's gonna drop, but um, September. This the interview this or the interview, project? This oh. interview. So uh, I got a project dropping called "It's Time" on September 13th. We actually just had a little moment. I actually signed my first deal. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Who you signed with? Capital. Capital uh, Christian Music Group. Capital S- Christian Music? Yeah. They got so many sectors of so many different things. Yeah, they got little sectors, but it's still... Capital's Capital is the building. We're in there. But, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I got my first, like, EP dropping with them. A lot of just great. I think, I think I'm, like, leveling up. Like, they done got me with great producers that they really... They got some good features or... Yeah. Like, how is it, like, what are the good features, features for, from, like, a Christian rap I think, standpoint? Like, I Kirk mean, Franklin, that's all I could think of. Like, I'm ooh. sorry. That's ignorant, but... Uh, wait, what? Never mind. Like no, no, no. Uh, but I was gonna... No, 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 no. This, But I was saying, 
that uh <laughs> I mean, was that not a good no Kirk, Kirk Franklin not even a rapper oh I'm about to say because people just be I, I don't know bro I don't know I'm sorry Kirk Franklin not even a rapper no. I feel like you know how music got different genres I feel like Christianity got different genres it really genres, do though, though. Like, like it be like you got the Christian rappers you got Christian R&B now it's like all, all type of things happening but I, I don't know a good feature is just I mean we got real stuff happening so you can look at someone's numbers and be like this is a good feature they got over a million Okay. Monthly listeners, or they got a strong social following. It's a guy. Like I think that. he's light skinned. He does like Christian rap. He's super nice. I forgot it's not D one, but D one is a good one. Yeah, I did. I got a song with him. We, I mean, on his album, I did a feature on his album. Oh, this is fire. Yeah, I, I, I think don't. it's like one of his top songs on Spotify. It's called "In My Bag" remix. Oh, my bad. Yeah. No, not from no. I'm, I'm not flexing. I'm like. Yeah, cool, cool. You making it? You goofy? You like oh, <laughs> chill, like chill. <laughs> yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Chill. Top seller. Chill. My bad. Chill. <laughs> it ain't even it. Yeah. Okay. So you just signed with Capital. Damn. Like, I was like, yeah. How you feel? This new? How, how new is this? How recent is this? It's new. It's like real new. How new? Like earlier like, this year, but it's oh. like we really just like getting a ball rolling. How do you feel? That's a that's a bigger yo. You've been rapping for two years. Yeah, I feel and good. You got though. signed by Kel, like a major label. Yeah, you're in the league. We actually the first the first like full like Christian rap like female to do it like major. So that gotta feel good, right? Yeah, like I said, it's a part of like that journey of like I said, just trying to show people you ain't gotta do it a certain way to get results. Like that's not the firm foundation of what it's about, but it's like. I definitely, like, when you was asking, don't you want to X, Y, and Z? Like, yeah, I definitely want to be successful. Not as much for my sake as for the sake of those who are going to come after me to see, like, someone did it mm. and was successful doing it God's way. Mm. This is fire, man. This is great. Yeah. Hopefully you come back when you get more success. We can keep doing this. Yeah. Yo, I got a, uh, this is random. This is, I have, I, I used to do these freestyle mm. back home in mm. Baltimore, right? And I'm thinking about bringing it back. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to like come bless my platform. Oh, do like a what's name? Like a rap. Like that will be hard. I'm serious. Nah. I'm so that'll serious. be hard. So I, so it's funny. It's my first time ever talking about this in public. But like okay. that's how Someone I kind of got popular. Your idea. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah. It don't matter. So that's how I got popular. Like I was doing freestyles, or whatever, back in Boston. Really? Yeah. Before I started doing the interviews, and I kind of like got away from it. But I've been really? talking to some people, trying to bring it back. Hey, yo, would you? That would be hard if you could. I'm serious though. I'm I'm serious too. We finna do some, I think we got some stuff lined up, too, this week or next week or something. All right, man, we want to talk, talk to you about that, man. I appreciate Hit it, man. Me up, For the people that don't know, I mean, everybody know how to follow you, all that, support what's going on. All yeah, that. it's at Child Like CC. We got the EP dropping. I'm Child Like CC everywhere. That's C-I-C-I, -I, Child Like. You should know how to spell that, hopefully. Uh, but, yeah, we got the EP coming. I think we're doing, like, five songs. They fire. They dumpers, they like, it's not just good because it's Christian rap. It's like really like that. Like, I just was at Trash Mag performing. They was in there. It's really like that, but I'm going to sanctify your ears, your playlist, do all that good stuff. But it's time, Child Like CC, September 13th. Man, this is Stream good. it. Child Buy Like CC, J Hill, J Hill Podcast is right. right. We out.